season just started and Aston Martin is already in a very strong position. A lot of stuff is in the works and I got the news for it on this Aston Martin team. So much improvements coming and an actual plan on how they are going to beat the rest of the grid, including the likes of the number one team, Red Bull. We've had three races so far and Alonso has finished on the podium three times so far. I mean, what a man in his 40s doing this. It is outstanding. Stroll finished fourth in Australia, probably would have finished fourth in Jeddah, and in, fir in the first race finished sixth, even with a practically broken wrist. This Aston Martin car, the AMR23, has one real big weakness, straight line speed. And there was an upgrade expected for Australia, which now is confirmed will come in Baku. And Mike Crack already says, the fans will be happy. There's a lot to expect from these upgrades. I have the whole entire upgrade package really plan to talk about and where this S Martin team will go and how important Baku will be for the rest of the year. And why I think the second half of the season will be Aston Martin's season to lose. Before I get all into it, thank you all so much for the support on the videos. You guys are amazing and I love you guys. And anybody that's not subscribed, please do. It would mean the world for me and like that video. Hit the notification bell, whether you're subscribed or not. And please enjoy the content. Let's get into the Aston Martin AMR23 upgrade, upgrade package. Okay, talking about this Aston Martin and what is to come for the future. We already know that a huge upgrade package is planned for Imola, and most teams will bring their big upgrade packages in the Europe races. This is because of costs, and also this is where essentially the season really kind of starts for most teams. Bigger improvements are coming later down the year. Words from Mike Crack. Specifically, and where we can actually look to see the car visibly change as of right now, is Baku, Imla, and Montreal. Now, obviously, if it's a floor upgrade, we will not see it. But the floor will be a big thing that is improvised, and we know that to be true. We've already talked about the actual diffuser being kind of a weakness for the Mercedes teams because it cannot produce the actual straight line speed that the diffuser of the Red Bull can, which is practically a triple DRS that it has on its car. The Aston Martin, out of all the cars on the grid, and I'm probably just gonna say it, has the best downforce and best cornering speed out of any car, including Red Bull as of right now. They have way too much downforce for way too much less top speed, and it really costs them in races like Australia. On that track, if we didn't have a fourth DRS zone, like the one where for stopping practically past Hamilton and made him look like an F2 car. If we didn't have that fourth DRS, or sorry, that DRS zone is actually the third DRS zone in Australia. If we didn't have that, the AMR would catch Hamilton, I think, with no problem. With there being four DRS zones, it now had to actually catch up to the actual people in front, and the cars from behind could actually somewhat catch up to the Aston Martin. Lance was actually able to keep up with both Sainz and Pierre Gasly because it was sticking within that four DRS zone. Without it, I think they would be ahead and most teams would actually struggle because of it. The actual DRS being open and really those straight line speed spots really kill them. It was the same talk in Saudi Arabia. If that really big straight wasn't there in Saudi Arabia, the first sector was pretty much dominated by Aston Martin. In Bahrain, they really dominated in the medium speed corners, which was most of the track, but the real straight line speed is also another deficit so they could not overtake. Baku will be one of those tracks where this upgrade coming for its rear wing and really to improve its top speed because it's not just all in the rear wing. It's mainly the philosophy of the back of the car. We know that that rear suspension and everything to the back of the car is Mercedes alike. So Mercedes has just as bad of drag, but they were faster here in Australia. So there is room to improve definitely for Aston Martin. And I mean, big time. Can they gain those exact same speeds? I don't think so, but they don't need to. They need to be somewhere within that four to three kilometer range to actually be able to keep up with Red Bull. And their efficiency is what is most important because Red Bull's DRS is stupidly inefficient and that's what makes them so dangerous. Essentially, these 2023 cars, it's not like 2021 where the engines were the most important part. Having really drag efficiency and not having much of it is the most important part. And of course, downforce, because you can look at a Williams, which I guess isn't draggy, but has no downforce. So obviously the two go hand in hand, but engine power isn't as important. Reliability is obviously important, but that doesn't really come with the car and really the cooling package 
usually doesn't play too much of a factor in how fast your car is unless you have way too much cooling and you're way too draggy because of that. The Aston does not have that problem. The biggest problem is the rear, as I talked about, it's rear wing. And I think a lot of this has to do with how they were last year. Obviously their AMR 22 started the year awful, but as the car got better, we could see the actual strong suits from the AMR 22, which was slow speed corners and medium speed corners. But if you guys remember last year, Vettel, guys jersey I'm wearing, in Baku had an outstanding race and finished sixth, which on merit was probably the best Aston Martin performance they had, with the exception of a track like Singapore, which I think the AMR 23 will be the strongest at. Oh, they do have an improvement though, which might actually make it a bit difficult, but we'll see. Their straight line speeds are coming. The second half of this season is going to play into all of Aston Martin's strong suits. And by second half, I mean by Imola, that Aston Martin will be blazing. Just adding on a little less drag and having a better rear wing, they got something cooking and I'll explain to you why. Let's look at the schedule that we have for 2023 after Baku. So upgrade is coming in Baku, we will have Miami where I think the AMR 23 will not be that strong. I think it will be something similar of a Baku to them. Sectors one and two should be pretty strong but sector three with that big straight is probably where they're going to lack. But it is a track that is front oriented, as smart as a front oriented car. So I would still see them being predicted second or third if we don't see insane upgrades by Ferrari. Now Imola comes along and this is the track that I think most people don't really talk about Aston Martin for that I think will be a track where they surprise the whole grid. Imola is a medium speed corner fest with some slow speed corners and some chicanes which will go to the Aston Martin strong suit. This will be a track to look out for and where I think Red Bull might genuinely lose to Aston Martin. After Imola, we go into Monaco, then Spain, then Canada. These are all tracks that I think that AMR will thrive on and downforce is extremely important. Maybe Canada being the least out of the four that I just named. Downforce is the key and the slow to medium speed corner tracks will be where that AMR excels at. Its upgrades are coming to even its side pots. With two thirds of the car changing, we will see these visible changes change. Right now they have a downforce monster. What they really need though is a lot less drag with that exact same downforce. So they need to be taking parts off and adding parts to only really reduce that drag, which Dan Follows already has a plan for. As I talked about, that floor will be essential to upgrades and so will the rear wing. But even the front wing itself right now is causing a bit of drag. If you look at the Red Bull front wing and you look at the AMR front wing, you can tell that the AMR is going for more downforce while that Red Bull doesn't need the downforce. This obviously goes into Red Bull's strong suits in their top speed and really high speed cornering because they're able to have a front wing with so much less load. I expect Aston Martin to make a front wing multiple times over in the season with a lot less front load, including the rear wing to really make that car mesh together. The second half of the season is looking extremely bright and I expect Aston Martin to actually have race wins, which so does Mike Crack and he's looking forward to these races with slow speed and medium speed corners where that Aston Martin can thrive. Specifically if they can even out qualify those Red Bulls, which could be a very close battle and I'm excited to see it. Don't expect Baku to be a bad race for them with upgrades coming. We got to see how efficient this DRS actually becomes and whether they can actually thrive off of that upgrade. Leave your thoughts down below. What do you guys think? Is this AMR 23 destined for greatness? Will it actually make it to the top? Leave your thoughts down below. Please leave a like, subscribe. It would mean the world and peace.